Hey everyone, my name is Brent Colby. We're gonna take a few minutes and talk about the law of process. This is one of John Maxwell's 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And it talks about the, the concept of leadership's development over time and how we need to be intentional about that. So in just a second, we're going to look at uh, some of Maxwell's leadership growth guidelines and also how we might apply the law of process to our own leadership development. As I mentioned just a moment ago, we're talking from John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. All of the content, all of the ideas discussed in this quick presentation are going to be pulled straight from Maxwell's book. The most notable thing about this book after 10 whole years is that the concepts really have withstood at least that test of time. And he really stands by the concepts here. So this law, a process is one that has been tested, that's been examined closely, and has uh, prevailed as one of Maxwell's really big ideas about leadership. The big idea of the chapter is this, that leadership develops daily, not in a day. For a lot of us, people think that you're either born a leader or you're not born a leader. And as we'll see here in just a moment, we all start on some spectrum of leadership, but it's definitely something that can be developed in any individual. Some of us are going to be more inclined toward leadership, while others of us are going to really have to work hard to develop some of these critical skills. But the law of process says that this is something that you can develop over time, but it requires a constant uh, honing of these skills. So to become someone who develops and who applies this law of process, you must be someone who's aware that a process even exists in the first place and be willing to apply yourself to it on a regular basis. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first uh, process that Maxwell describes here. So here we have the leadership growth process in five different steps. And Maxwell says each individual kind of experiences these in sequence. And so the first step he says here is that you don't know what you don't know meaning simply that you are unaware of the things that you're unaware of. So uh, while some people in later steps will recognize areas of deficiencies in their own leadership, people who start at this first step don't even know that they're deficient in anything in the first place. It really is a general ignorance of leadership uh, concepts at this phase. You don't know that you're violating concepts. You don't know that those concepts even exist. And you don't even know how to improve because you're not even aware that you need to improve in the first place. This first concept, you don't know what you don't know, applies to all of us in some capacity. Even those with some leadership skills and training, there are areas of leadership that they are completely unaware of their own inability to be effective because they don't know that those areas exist yet. The second step is that you know that you need to know. And this is the first time that leaders are becoming self-aware and recognizing that, ah, you know what? There's some stuff out there that I need to start wrapping my brain around. For some of us, this takes place when we have some sort of challenge or incident with our own leadership. Maybe um, we kind of screw something up or drop the ball or find ourselves really failing in a leadership situation. And for the first time we realize, ah, you know what? I really need to know how to work with volunteer betters, how to be a better communicator how to cast vision about a certain uh, event or opportunity or program. And so and that second phase of leadership growth process, according to Maxwell, is that you know that at some level you need to learn more. The third phase is this. You know what you don't know. So you've come from a place where you know that you need to know stuff, and now you're able to articulate which things precisely you would like to know. And so you can name it, you can go ahead and research it, and you can actually begin to develop as a leader because you know what you don't know. You can call it volunteer, you can call it vision shaping, you can call it maybe even some organizational stuff. This is the really the first, uh, the tipping point for leaders where they can actually put their finger on exactly what it is that they need to develop and start getting to work on those things. So you've moved at this point from not even knowing what you need to know to recognizing that there are some deficiencies. Now in step three, you know what you don't know, which empowers and enables you to move on to, of course, step no. You know and grow and it starts to show. 
So here Maxwell's playing around a bit with some of his words where he says, now you know, because you can research and look into these things and start doing some work and developing your skills and grow naturally. If you're going to be doing the hard work and putting in the time and necessary to develop some of these leadership skills, you're going to show some growth, which is of course that third part of the stanza here. It starts to show people begin to recognize in you growth in your leadership ability. And this is where the application first starts to be seen by yourself and by other people. The fifth and final step of the leadership growth process is that you simply go because of what you know. While in stage four, it had to be very intentional. You had to be very disciplined and a lack of thinking about it would maybe mean a lack of adequacy in that leadership area. But by phase five, it's now not something that you have to be disciplined in doing. It's just a part of who you are. You simply go because of what you know. It's subconscious. It's automatic. It's just a part of you by default. And that is where most leaders really hit their stride. Some people have gifts where they just intuitively start taking off and have success in a lot of areas. And they're not thinking about doing those things. Maybe they have great interpersonal skills or maybe they're very organized by default. And while they can still grow those things, a lot of times it's just going to come automatic to them. And that's where you enter into a sweet spot of leadership growth where because you know it, because it's just part of who you are, you just are automatically doing it and being very effective right from the get go. So the question is, how do we apply this law of process? Maxwell suggests three main ways that we can go ahead and apply the law of process to our own lives. First, he says that we need to formulate a plan for personal growth. And so he suggests actually getting out a pen and paper and writing out a plan. For some of us, these plans are going to all look very different. Some are going to be complex. Some are going to be very simple, but you need to write it out. There's something very powerful about actually writing it out and being formally about just putting it on paper. Once you have a plan written out, you can evaluate it, assess it, and select study and leadership material that you'll use to accomplish that plan. Perhaps you've identified uh, a need for, uh, to develop your communication skills or your interpersonal skills or maybe uh, emotional intelligence. And what you can do is then devise a plan, find study and leadership material to meet those needs. Maxwell encourages people to participate in leadership development on a weekly, monthly, and annual schedule, which is to say, find content. Maybe it's a podcast or it's a, a blog that you read that you can just on a weekly basis be continually having that input into your life. And also monthly, maybe some more long form like different books or online video series, series that you can engage in. And even on an annual schedule, make it part of your annual calendar, part of your pattern to go to leadership development conferences. And finally, Maxwell suggests a book that he wrote titled Today Matters for some more ideas if you need help taking this first step in applying the law process and formulating your own plan for personal growth. Part two of the application, suggests Maxwell, is that you should apply your growth strategy to those that you lead. This, of course, is one of the essential qualities of a leader is that you're not just growing or doing things in a vacuum, but that you incorporate others and invite them along for the ride as well. Read books with your team members, attend conferences with your team members, or maybe you can become responsible for the growth of others by shifting your attitude and seeing that because you are a leader of these people, you should really shift the mindset and see yourself as one who is responsible for their growth and development. Finally, if you can do these two things, you'll start to create a culture of growth in your own organization. Show others how you develop, how you value leadership development. Don't just say it's important. Show them that it's important. Be a grower yourself and not just tell people to grow. Provide resources through your workplace for the development of others. Maybe buy people books, take them to conferences, uh, link them to great content that you discover online that may not cost anything at all except for your time and energy and finding and kind of cultivating those types of things. And finally, it's important for you to recognize and reward people for their hard work. It's sometimes easier to simply ask people to do work and harder for us to, to actually recognize them for doing the things that they've done. We, many of us who are drivers, have a tendency to move on to the next thing before we fully recognize and honored the first thing. So make sure that that's part of your process and that will help you create a culture of growth in your organization as well. Thanks for listening to me and some of the highlights from John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And of course, 
check out John Maxwell's book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership to discover it for yourself. Thanks a lot.